So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about a favorite pen of mine. It's the deer antler pen. And you can see here, here's one example of it. It's on a bolt action. It is a favorite pen among hunters, amongst outdoorsmen. You can put it on the bolt action. I've made them for, you know, just almost any kit that's sitting out there. And specifically in today's video, we're not necessarily going to talk about the turning aspects of it. We're going to talk about how do we pick a deer antler to, to actually use and make into the blank. We're going to talk a little bit about the prep work that's going to be there. And then most importantly, we're going to drive home how we drill it and we drill it in a safe and effective manner. So I'm going to start the video with the same, when we get into the drilling part of it and talking part of it, I'm going to start with the same thing. Just make sure that when you're working with deer antler, you're doing it safe. Always wear a face mask. Always, always wear some sort of respiratory device or mask to make sure that you don't have any problem with the antler. The beauty of the deer antler, as you can see here, is it's got just gorgeous color. And that's going to be one of the things that we're going to try to accentuate. And to me, it's one of the few times that I don't mind seeing a little bit of a bow in my pen. It's if I'm trying to keep some of the character that I have on that pen, I'm trying to maintain that it's in the pen blank. So I either like them where they're completely, you know, white or got some character in here, or if we can even get some of the bark from the outside of the pen on here, we're going to talk about how you do all that and how you get it all ready to go and how you turn it. So with that, let's get into the actual deer antler prep. All right, so before we prep our deer antler, there is one word of caution. Always make sure that you're wearing a face shield and some sort of eye protection and a respirator. All I'm going to tell you is that the dust that comes out of deer antler is a very fine powder and you just want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. But you know what? I've advocated in all my other videos, we're protecting ourselves no matter what we're doing in all my videos. So I think one of the things that most people want to do when they start with deer antler, and you can take a look at this piece, is you want to gravitate towards that biggest piece. You want to find the biggest piece because that's going to be the easiest to drill, that's going to be the easiest to work with, it's going to be the easiest to cut. But you know what? It may not be the most attractive piece when we're done with it. When I make a deer antler pen, there's two things that I, one of two things that I want to get. I either want to get that pen that's got that pure white color with the lines of the brown and the oranges in it, you know, a little swaying in there, or I want to get and maintain some of the outside bark. And if I do that, that makes a gorgeous pen. I'm going to throw a picture up now of what a pen with that outside bark looks like. But to get that is not as easy as you might think. So when you take and you start with something like this, this, this deer antler has a lot of marrow and um, a lot of just voids in the deer antler. And so when you cut it, and I'll show you a piece here, and I'll, I'll throw up a, um, a still shot of this one. But when you can cut it, you can see here that it's just not a, um, a strong inner bond in here. So that what you see is that you're going to see a lot of voids. You're going to see a lot of discolorations. Some people may think that pen is beautiful. I'm going to just tell you that the majority of the people would rather see the outside bark on it or have it pure white with the little lines of swaying in there. So what I'm going to gravitate towards too, I'm going to gravitate towards something like this. It's a little bit smaller, but it has really nice color in it and when I look at it you're gonna see here that it's really really solid on the inside so I'm not gonna have any kind of problems with it I'm gonna be able to manipulate it as I get as your skill progresses you're gonna be able to manipulate it to get some outside bark on here and we'll show you that on the second cut when we're gonna do this one and from that you're gonna be able to really nice gorgeous pen so you can see here the first thing that I do is I'll take my blank and I don't know if you're like everybody else if I'm like everybody else I will mark the uh, tube I'm gonna do this obviously for a bolt action I mark my tubes why do I mark my tubes only because then when I set this down and I have to go back to it and I see it sitting on the table tomorrow or the next day I have no idea what it is so I'm gonna mark my tube and you can see here the first one probably gonna be really really easy I'm gonna be able to take that here I'm gonna be able to line it up and I'm going to mark some lines on here as to where I want to cut this. So I'll take a Sharpie marker. And I'm going to go over here. And I am going to mark it. And I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch extra on the side. 
on the long side and we'll talk about that it's a little hard to see it in the video but that's about an eighth of an inch i'll put a little dot here as to where the blank really is and then you can see here as i bring it up i've got a good strong eighth of an inch of a gap here so that when i'm actually going to then finish off this other side when i'm doing my drilling i'm going to not drill through because i don't want to explode the blank and we've talked about that before so i'm going to drill part way through get to here then i'll take it back to my bandsaw and i will then clean it up on the bandsaw and just you know obviously I, I won't put a little line here so i know that i can cut this thing off here so now when i'm over here i can see that if i extend this line here i can get another blank out of here i can get probably three or four blanks out of here and so i'm going to take my my tube and if you can see it here i can clearly get another blank out of here but one of the things that you'll see here is that this line goes a little bit off at an angle and if I exaggerate it it's off here and I think a lot of people will just leave that and then they'll just mark the next line and they'll cut the next line when we're going to do a drilling I want two edges that are very square on both sides you know you know as close to perpendicular to the tube that I can get so I will now take this and I'll mark a second line here then I'll move this blank over to here and I'll take my marker and I will cut it off over here once again I now yes I am I'm gonna waste this little piece that's in here and I'm gonna cut it off I'm gonna mark this we have the extra eighth of an inch that I have sitting on here so that we can see that I've got you know the extra eighth of an inch to play but that's gonna make it a lot easier because this to this if I drew the line where the tube is gonna go in across here this would be you know as close to perpendicular to the tube as possible and if we needed to clean it up on a sander we can but it's really going to make it a lot easier when we get to the next step and we're going to get to drilling so with that i'm going to break away i'm going to run to my bandsaw and i am going to cut on these lines all right so now i'm back and you can see here that i've made my cuts i've actually cut off like i said i was that little piece of the edge that i wasn't going to need and now that I've got it all lined up, you can see I've got definitely that eighth of an inch. So when I'm going to be doing my drilling, it's going to be a lot easier for me to drill this piece because I'm not going to drill all the way through. And you'll see when we set it up, it's almost impossible to drill all the way through on this one. And because we're going to use a dead center and we're going to use our Jacobs truck and we're going to actually drill on the lathe. So it's going to be really hard for us to drill all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and then I'm going to cut it out. And so I might put a little bit of a line here so that when I go back to my bandsaw, I know how far in depth that I've drilled and what I still need to maintain for this tube. So if I, I want to make sure that when I'm bandsaw cutting it, I'm not going to cut any deeper than the, the length of the tube. So now the question is, well, how do I, how do I drill this? And I know that I could put this, you know, most likely you might be able to put this in your, um, drill press and if you've got a nice little holding jig on there you can probably get it to line up but as we get into the more complicated things like this when i want to get a nice little curve and i want to drill something like this you can see that nice curve that's in there it's not going to be as easy because when i put this in my in my drill press and i put it in, even in my mount it's got that natural bend to it so let's take a take a minute and talk a little bit about how we're going to drill this where we're going to drill it and how we're going to figure out where we should do it so if i take this tube and i put it back on here and i move it up for you what i'm going to do is i'm going to find where this tube wants to sit with respect to the blank this way and i'm just going to put a little line here and a little line on the back and then i'm going to simply take this line and draw it that way take this line and draw it that way and notice i'm not perfectly centered on this one that's the thing about deer antler you're never going to be perfectly centered so now i'm going to take my tube and i'm going to put it the other way and i'm going to line it up and you can see here i've got it lined up that way now same thing i'm going to put a little nick here i'm going to put a little nick here and now i know where those are going to be so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this there 
and I'm going to take this there and that's where I want to be doing my drilling I want to drill from this hole straight through to this hole and we're going to set it up now and we're going to do it on the lathe so it's real easy so one thing I want to point out here and this is a little bit more of an advanced technique but if I want to get this bark and if I look at this you know here you know you can see here I've got some curvature on other blanks I may have a, a much more pronounced curvature on them and I want to get that bark on either the inside where that uh, concave curve is what I'm going to do is I can adjust the center when I'm putting it on here so when I when I want to look at this tube and I want to put it over here and you can see here I'm going to offset it quite a lot and try to only get a little bit of that bark to taper into it as you get really comfortable with the drilling technique you're going to see that this is possible all I need to do is you can see here I did it is I adjust where that center point is so if I put my tube on here and you won't be able to see it through here you might be able to yeah there you go and you can see that I've got a new center spot which will then give me that if I if I then pull this off I'll still have some of this bark because I kind of know where that bushing is going to be as long as this point I mark and this point I mark when we're going to do this new drilling tech or the drilling technique on the lathe the drill bit always has to start here and will always come out at that other point and you'll be able to maintain some of that bark once again it's a slightly more advanced technique and I would say let's start with going right through the middle and getting our comfort level down in the middle but once you get this down you're going to see that you have a lot more possibilities for drilling this and getting my con my uh, outside bark and even these really small pieces using this technique and using the, this setup when we're going to do it you're going to see we can do really really small pieces and obviously the smaller the piece here the better chance is that we're going to catch some of that outside bark so let me set up and uh, we're going to get ready to start our drilling okay so now we're set up and we're ready to do our drilling and we're going to need just a couple simple little tools to do this one First and foremost, let's start out with, uh, it's, an, it's an awl, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in here, I'm going to give myself a nice little tap, so I know where that center is, I'm going to be able to use that to find my center a lot easier. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, I'm going to take this, give it a little tap, now I've got a nice clean marking point for where my piece is going to go in on this side, and you can see here, what I've done is I've already set up my my Jacobs chuck in my in my uh, drill in the lathe head. So when it spins, we're actually going to push the piece into it. And what I've done is I've used a little piece of blue tape. The blue tape tells me if I line up where my tube is. You can see here I've got a little bit of extra space, so I'm going a little bit deeper into it. But then I know where I'm going to stop, so I don't ever have to, I don't want this to actually connect into hitting the dead center that's sitting up over here. So I'm going to be able to push my tube in, my uh, blank into it. And then the other thing is, if I take a look at this and I line this up, you can see there, with my hands out of the way, that if I line this up at the bottom here, and where this thing lines up, you can see here, it's going to be right where I'm telling, I told myself a little bit earlier that I can do my cut. So that when I, if I drill into this part, because we know the blank is already a little bit shy of, of this line, and then this line shows me where I'm going to make my cut, you're going to see that everything will line up and I'm not going to get any kind of blowout. So the key to this <clears throat> is this little tool that we have here. And it's a nice little locking wrench. And you can see it's got nice rubber grips on it, which is going to be able to hold my piece. And when I present it into the drill press and push it in using the dead center, I'm going to be able to get this to, I'm going to be able to use this to hold my blank. And so I will do this over here and kind of get this to line up. So you can see here now I'm locked in. And what I did was I put this little blue part over on this side so I know where I'm going to be and I know I'm going to find it. So now all I got to do is take this blank find it on my drill press there my dead center now just caught in and so now I'm going to just take this here out so I'm going to let my drill start up 
And what's important is I used a brad point bit. And I know in all my other videos when I say I don't really care about what kind of bit you use, you can use a jobber bit, you can use a brad point bit. On this one, to me, it's important to use the brad point bit because now I know that I've got it lined up in here and I'm not going to get any kind of drifting or shock when I first start putting it in and the bit's not going to have to find itself. And now, hopefully, you can see the physics of everything else that we talked about. If I was to take this and I was to move this head, uh, move this blank offset and move it up here so I want to keep this bark on here, well, we know that the drill is not going to drift, and we know that if it goes in here, it's going to come out and meet what I got over here. So that's how I'm going to be able to offset that drill hole so that I can get a little bit more going, and I can get it a little bit offset, and I can keep that bark. So now I'm just simply going to turn this on. 600 and I'm slowly gonna just ride this in I know that I don't have to worry about anything is as long as I get it to that end So I wanted to stop the lathe now when I showed you where I got to the end. You can see here that I've got the tape here, and it's stopping me from going all the way through. And I've got the piece here, and I know that I didn't make any connection because I've got this little bit of a buffer zone sitting in here. So in general, now I know that I'm done, and I've got this thing drilled all the way through. So we can either, the easiest way typically is to just release the head that I've got there, hold it in this hand, on my lathe just slowly pull it back out and now as you can see I've got a perfectly drilled hole all the way through the piece well not all the way through the piece because I've got this here on the other end and when I go to my bandsaw and I scribe it and cut it on this line I'm gonna have a perfectly drilled deer antler where I can you know I can do whatever I want in terms of moving that hole and keeping it so that being said now we're going to be ready for turning. So I'm not going to focus, as I said, a lot on the turning aspects of it. When I get down and I'm done with doing the prep and I've got it ready to go on my lathe, I am going to go through it and I'm going to do it with uh, Easy Wood Wood Turning Tools and I'm going to use their traditional round cutter. And if you watch my video on turning acrylic, it's the same techniques that I'm going to do there. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a couple scoop cuts to get it down and round. I'm going to then go through it and I'm going to do my peel cuts to get it, you know, flatten it out. I'm going to find my edge. I'm going to roll it back in and then I'm going to finish it. And to me, there's two different ways that you can finish the pen. If it's got pure color, no, no, um, no inclusions on it. I, it's a pen that I don't mind just finishing it off all the way through my micro mesh and then buffing it. I'll take it to the Beal buffing system. I will get a beautiful shine on it. And then the nice thing is, as it's being used, it actually gains more character. And so I will typically finish most of my pens, if there's no inclusions on it, I will finish it simply on the Beal buffing system. If there are inclusions on it, and it's the little parts and the little pores and things like that, I will then go through and I will do a glue boost finish on it. So I will do the liquid finish in a bottle, and I've got another video on how to do that one, so I won't take up your time with that here. But I will actually do a complete glue boost finish on it, buffing it all the way out, and then taking it to the same buffing wheels and getting it all done. So with that, I thank you for watching this video. As always, I'm looking for suggestions. So if you have any comments, questions, anything, please put them in the comment section below, and I promise you I get to them. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm always looking for topics. I'm always looking for um, things that people want to talk about. I look at these videos as just telling you the way I do it. And what it is, is it's just a, a simple way that I can facilitate conversation amongst how we do these things. So with that, I thank you. Have a great day. This video made possible by the fine folks at Exotic Blanks. For all your pen making needs, Exotic Blanks has you covered. Find them at www.exoticblanks.com. And also by Pen Makers International, the educational source for pen making.